Today we're going to go over the X-Broom. Uh, I'm going to show you all the key features um, and then go over a couple of the maintenance points that you're going to want to look at. Um, use it kind of as a, a daily inspection preventative maintenance program. Um, I'll start off on this side of the truck. First things first, we're going to look at the hydraulic tank. Uh, it's an externally mounted hydraulic tank. We run about 45 gallons. Uh, we do have a sight glass that's externally mounted as well. Um, when we send it from the factory, the hydraulic level is going to be right above the temperature gauge. So uh, you want to inspect that make sure that your hydraulic fluid is nice and clear. Uh, if you see any, uh, any dirt or any contaminants in there, you're going to want to make sure that you uh, do a hydraulic filter and fluid change. Uh, there is a filter on the top of the tank. When you swap out your uh, hydraulic fluid every thousand hours, you're going to want to make sure that you do that filter as well. Um, you're going to want to inspect that, make sure all the bolts on it are tight, make sure you don't see any cracks, nothing like that. Uh, make sure it's nice and clean. Moving down from there, we've got our gutter broom assembly. Uh, this is another, another thing that you're going to want to keep a pretty close eye on. Um, again, inspect it, make sure all your bolts are tight, uh, make sure your bearings inside of all the components are nice and clean. Um, inspect this airbag here. You're going to want to check it for any kind of abrasions, any kind of leaking, anything like that. Uh, we also have an air cylinder on the top. Inspect that. Make sure it's clean. Make sure the bolts that are connecting it to your gutter broom assembly are nice and tight. Check for any leaks. From there, uh, we have a, uh, our gutter broom tilt cylinder. Again, same thing. I'm going to stress it a million times. Make sure everything's clean. Make sure everything's attached. Um, another thing you're going to want to inspect is your actual gutter broom segments. So you want to make sure those are attached, make sure that they're nice and evenly, evenly worn so they're nice and balanced. Uh, moving on from there, we have our spray bar. Same thing. Make sure it's free from debris. Uh, you're going to want to test it inside. Turn on the spray bar, make sure all of your spray tips are spraying a nice hollow cone. So if they're not, you can pull out the spray tip, run air through the front of it, and you'll probably see some contaminants come out of there. We've got one grease point on the gutter broom assembly. And that's going to be right here between those, these two pivot plates. Uh, you only have to do that about once a month, a couple shots of grease. All it's doing is keeping some lubricity there between the two gutter broom plates. So make sure you keep an eye on that. Um, we do have these two bolts as well. There's going to be a, a spring washer in between those. Over time, they do tend to loosen up. Uh, you're going to want to make sure the most you'll have to put on them is about a half turn to a turn. So you just want to make sure those are snug. Another grease point that we're going to have on the truck is going to be the uh, PTO shaft. It's going to be pretty much directly behind the DEF tank. You have to crawl under there. Um, it's going to be on the U-joints. Give it a couple shots. You only got to do that about once a month as well. So while you're going through doing uh, lubrication and maintenance on the truck, I do want to stress to you how important safety is. Um, we do have safety procedures put in place. Um, they are going to be in our manual, service manuals, uh, weekly inspection manuals. Everything that uh, we suggest you do to the truck, we're going to have safety protocol for that. So, for instance, if you're climbing under the truck to grease your PTO shaft, you want to make sure that the motor's not running, parking brake's set, uh, make sure you're doing everything in a safe manner. Another thing that you're going to want to check when you're in this area of the truck, you're going to look to the center of the truck and check your center deflector. Uh, you want to make sure that you got a nice gap above the road. Um, you don't want it too high, too low. You want it uh, about a half an inch off the ground. Anything below that, you're going to have premature wear on your center deflector. Anything above that, material is going to slip right under that. So you want to make sure that's adjusted. Um, you can also check the hangers for the chains on the center deflector. You're going to want to check the tabs for the center deflector chains. Um, if you do have to make adjustments, we've got them on all four corners. Um, simply pull a link through, attach it there, uh, just to make sure that your adjustment for your center deflector is nice. All right, moving towards the rear of the truck, we have one manifold here. There's going to be a, an identical one on the other side. Um, what you're going to want to inspect on this, you want to make sure that all the surfaces are clean. Um, you're going to want to check all the connections, make sure that uh, they have a positive connection, no dirt, no grease, nothing like that is contaminating all those connections. Uh, while you're back here, inspect all your hydraulic lines. You want to make sure all the hydraulic lines are secured to the frame. Um, you're looking for any kind of wear or abrasion on the lines. Um, you also want to double check the connection to the manifolds and make sure that there's no leaks, nothing like that. Got a hydraulic cooler here. There is a fan behind it that will pull air through it. Uh, while you're cleaning your truck, you want to make sure that, that you're using your pressure washer and cleaning out all the fins of this hydraulic cooler. 
Um, we have it down on the bottom. Also, if you pull the door down, we have a grate that you can spray through as well. Uh, recommendation that we make is to run your hydraulic fan while you're doing that. What it's going to do, it's going to clear out any kind of debris that might be in that fan. Um, you want to keep that clean so you're not burning up your fan. Another grease point on the truck are going to be the upper and lower elevator bearings. We've got one up in here. There is a whip off of the bearing to make it easily accessible. Um, you're going to want to grease that every day, one to two pumps. You want to make sure that the grease is visible on the bearing. Um, you don't want any kind of contaminants staying in the, inside that bearing. So we've got one upper, one lower, same thing, grease that every day, a couple pumps every single day before you start your job. So we have our main J box here. It's going to be a stainless steel box. Um, it is completely sealed to keep it free from uh, debris and water. You're going to want to make sure that you check your latches, make sure they're getting a positive engagement there. You also want to double check the seal. So inspect all the way around, make sure you're getting a good seal. Um, you, obviously you don't want any kind of contaminants getting inside that box. And now that we're at the rear of the truck, there are a few things that you want to double check and make sure uh, they're nice and clean and secured. Starting off with the uh, main broom air cylinder. You want to make sure that your pins are secured in there. You're going to want to inspect the cylinder itself, uh, check the shaft, make sure there's no debris building up around that. Uh, you're also going to want to look at your sonar tube. Uh, it's pretty critical that you keep this sonar clean. What I do every time I walk behind it, I'll stick my finger in there and make sure it's clean. Uh, same thing with the sonar plate. You want to make sure that's clean. If it builds up with debris, uh, you're going to get inaccurate readings. If you have your auto balance on, it'll tend to make your main broom wear unevenly. We also have our main broom bearing. Again, inspect it. Make sure that the bolts are nice and tight. Make sure that you're keeping it greased. Uh, that you only got to do about once a week, but you want to make sure you're getting grease throughout the entire bearing. Uh, you don't want any kind of contaminants getting in there causing premature bearing failure. So uh, for the main broom motor, we do have our shaft is slotted with a keyway. Uh, to attach that, we have these locking collars. There's two of them. When you install them, you want to make sure that your uh, locking collar is centered directly over the keyway. Uh, when you torque those down, you'll be looking for about 33 foot-pounds on each bolt. Make sure that the spacing on that is nice and even. Last thing on these uh, main broom cylinders, you're going to want to check your uplock cylinders. Uh, there is a hook that will grab the bottom of the uplock clevis. You want to make sure that that's making a, a good engagement. Uh, if for whatever reason, if your main broom is up and that lock is not in place, uh, there's probably something, there's probably some debris that's in the uh, uplock cylinder shaft. Make sure that stays nice and clean. Okay, moving to the rear of the truck, uh, there's a couple components that you're going to want to look at. Um, inside the cab, we do have a feature that will run a test pattern on your uh, aero board. So turn that on. You're going to want to inspect every light. Make sure that you don't have any that are burnt out. Uh, it'll run through and cycle every single light. So make sure you're inspecting that. This one's pretty simple. All you got to do, inspect, make sure that these are tight. You want to make sure that you have good tension on your end slides. Uh, this is made to be adjustable, so you can move it in or out. Uh, helps with trailing, all that kind of stuff, but make sure you don't have any damage to your tie bar. You want to make sure it's straight and that all your bolts are tight. Okay, on the curb side of the truck, we've got the same thing as the other side, main broom bearing. Make sure that's secured. Make sure it's nice and even on the main broom bearing plate. Uh, you're going to want to keep it greased, like I said, about once a week. Uh, you're going to want to put a couple pumps in there just to make sure that you're getting greased to that bearing. Curb side main broom cylinder. It's going to be exactly the same as the other one. Uh, inspect that for any damage, any leaks, anything like that. And then you're going to want to inspect your uh, sonar plates and sonars exactly the same. Make sure they're nice and clean so you're getting good readings off of those. Moving on to our water system. Pretty important that you keep your water filter clean. Uh, way to do that, there is a uh, ball valve that's right behind the water filter. You're going to want to flip that so it's towards you. Shut off the water supply to the filter. Unscrew it by hand. You will have some water that comes out. You're going to want to pull that filter, dump out the bowl, inspect the filter for any contaminants, make sure that those are nice and clean. And we do have this ball valve here, it comes direct from the tank. You can wash out the bowl, wash out the filter, whatever you got to do, just to make sure that it stays clean. You can reinstall it to do, do it exactly the same, tighten it back up.
and turn your ball valve back on. Your water pumps, you will want to inspect them, make sure they don't have any cracks, uh, make sure that all the water lines are secured and they're not leaking. Uh, pretty simple system, we run two 12 volt water pumps, uh, it's a pretty common pump. So uh, check your connections as well, you want to make sure that those are secured, make sure you don't have any contamination around there. I wanted to show everyone where our safety bar is located as well. This is going to be the safety bar for the hopper, uh, the vertical lift mass system. So it's right here inside the elevator. Loosen up the T-bolt, pull it out. Anytime that your hopper is in the air, you want to make sure that that safety bar is in place. Uh, you'll lift the hopper up to about cab height, you'll see a hole in the mast. You can slip this right in. So can't stress to you enough how important safety is. If there's any time that you're going to be working inside the frame under the hopper, you want to make sure that this safety bar is in place. Put it back, it's just as easy. Slide it in, tighten down the T-bolt. Moving over to the curbside gutter broom. It's gonna be the exactly the same as the other side. You're gonna to wanna to inspect it uh, for cleanliness. Check your airbag for any leaks. Check your hydraulic cylinder. Make sure that the shaft is nice and clean. Check the seal on that. Uh, double check all of your fittings. Make sure they're nice and tight. Uh, keep grease in that friction plate. And also double check those uh, gutter broom tilt bolts. Make sure they're nice and snug. You don't want them over tight, just snug enough to where they're not wiggling.